In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing pitching and how to practice your pitching while at home. We're gonna discuss how to vary your trajectory from high to low and how to really improve your quality of contact with a really simple thought. Make sure you check this video out. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today in my back garden. I hope you guys are keeping safe from the coronavirus. That's why I'm in my garden filming rather than out on the golf course. And if you haven't seen one of these before, filming lots of content at the minute on my YouTube channel, all focused around how to practice at home. And also the details for my social media channels are coming along the bottom of the screen. On there, I'm filming daily content Monday to Friday, giving you shorter clips than these, but ideas of how to practice and some technical aspects covering all sorts of parts of the game from putting all the way through to driving. Today we're gonna to discuss pitching and I'm gonna start with a simple drill and then we'll talk about how we can vary the trajectory from there and a little bit of technique. What I've done here is I've set four hula hoops on the ground that I've pinched for my daughter and I've varied where they are, the distance, they're varying in size, they're varying in uh, direction and that's a great way to practice rather than just getting sucking into one target, loads of golf balls, hit, 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 hit. I want you to look at trying to vary where you're trying to hit the golf ball. And you could do this and have a little bit of fun of getting them to roll into or finish in the hula loops or trying to land and stop in there. And that's the part where you can look at varying your flight and varying your trajectory. But I see too many golfers as said one target when they're having their practice swings, they're spending too long focusing down here on the ground or the ball, or they're looking at the flag. What I always ask golfers to do is pick landing areas, landing zones. So pick a spot on the green that you want to land the ball. And I normally ask people to imagine a hula hoop, a dustbin lid. So that's exactly what I've now got on the ground. Without this, you could simply put a golf towel on the ground or a few of them, or set some tee pegs out in some little boxes. So you've got a variety to hit through. I'll quickly go through this and see how many out of four I can get to land in these zones and I'm varying each one. So going for this left hand one first before we talk about playing a slightly harder game and actually looking at varying the flight. Good, one for one. Although that was the closest, that was the smallest I think. So now the longest, the pink one there in the middle. Oh, I'm on a roll, two for two. So practice swings, always looking at your landing zone. Now it's this green one. No, it hit the edge, but it was the back edge of it and went long. So it was a very nearly. So two from three, now this blue one. Oh, just short. Happy with the contact on all of those. And that's what I want to start discussing now. When I see amateur golfers struggling with their pitching, it tends to be where their pressure is. So we don't see enough pressure onto their lead foot by the time they hit the golf ball. Personally, I like us to start with probably 65% or so of our pressure onto our lead foot. And as we swing back, a little bit of pressure will move to our trail foot. But as we move through the ball, we definitely want the pressure to go to our lead side. And what we see with elite pitchers is their body is rotating and rising, okay? And I'll put some ideas to other videos I've filmed just here that's well worth checking out, talking about that. But what we see with great chippers and pitchers is their head is actually moving up and forwards. They're not staying down and still. They're definitely shifting pressure towards that lead side. And that's really gonna give us that quality of contact. So if we were playing this game where we were trying to hit high and low ones, my pressure's staying the same. I'm gonna keep the ball position pretty similar. And what I'd look at varying is almost my handle position. So if I was in the lower one, let's say this middle target here, I'd want my hands to lead the golf club a little bit more. So it's a lower trajectory and running into the circle. Now, if I was trying to land it and stop it, and I might need to open the face, but we'll talk about that in a second. I wanna really use all the loft on the golf club. And I wanna feel like I throw the club a little bit more. So I'm almost allowing that club to catch up with my hands, almost past my hands. So you'd see that in the finish position, the club is finishing more up in the air. And that scares golfers because they worry about thinning it. Now they tend to do that because they're maybe creating that throw release pattern, but they're also leaning back. So we've got to make sure that pressure's onto our lead foot 
and we get that feeling of almost throwing the club, allowing it to catch up with our hands. And we utilize the loft and the bounce that way. So pressure still forwards, but get that feeling of throwing the club. And you can see that club finishes a lot higher. We've got a much higher, softer trajectory. Now, if I was actually gonna get that ball, and this is a tough one, to land there and stop there, I've got to think about with, I've only got 58 degrees here, increasing the loft on the golf club. So opening the face, do it if you've got a good lie, but set that pressure onto that lead foot and still get that feeling of throwing the club. That's a little bit long. Somewhere in the middle would be absolutely great, but almost got right underneath that, that stopped almost on a 10 pence piece. It just wasn't enough but play around with it. I've got that pressure still on my lead foot. I'm definitely not hitting any of these from leaning backwards. There we go. Oh, that was the right distance, just slight to the left, but you can see how quickly, how soft those flights are coming out from. Yes, I have increased loft there, but the main thing is I'm getting that feeling of allowing the club to catch up with my hands rather than having that. For me, to be a real good pitcher of the ball, you need both. You need the high one, the low one. Are you hitting them, what Mickelson calls the hinge and hold, or are you getting the one where you're really utilizing loft and the bounce and allowing it to catch up with your hands? You need both trajectories. This is a great time to play around with that. As I said, the one that worries golfers is that feeling of throwing the club, and it's because they tend to team it up with also leaning backwards. So get that pressure onto that lead foot, and it's definitely gonna improve your pitching. Vary your, your target, pick landing areas, make at-home practice fun, and it's a great time to really uh, get better at your pitching. By the time you're on the golf course, you're definitely gonna improve. So uh, if that has helped, hit the thumbs up, share it with as many golfers as you can, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Cheers, guys, we'll see you soon.